Grace to you, peace from God our Father, and from the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I have a feeling that the second portion of God's Word that we read today from Acts chapter 14 was not quite as dramatic as it should have been. In fact, you might not even remember what we read in Acts chapter 14. It was about the end of Paul's first missionary journey. And it seems simple enough. Paul and Barnabas go back through some towns and they preach God's word. And then they appoint elders, these spiritual leaders in each of the congregations, and then they return home. And what is so dramatic about that, you may ask? Well, there is much more to that story than what meets the eye really hard to understand how bold and how courageous these men were for deciding to go through these towns if you don't know what happened to them the first time they went through. And to really appreciate how dangerous the situation was and how daring Paul and Barnabas were, we probably should take a look at the map. Put that up right there. Hopefully most of you can see it. First missionary journey of Paul and Barnabas. They start on the far right in Syria, where it says Antioch. They sail across the Sea of Cyprus, specifying their sail up to the port of Perga, and then they go north to another city, way up north of Antioch again. Antioch in the city. There in Antioch, they had a chance to preach God's word. But then this is what the Bible says happened there. But the Jews incited the God-fearing women of high standing and the leading men of the city. They stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their region. So they shook the dust from their feet in protest against them and went to Iconium. So they get kicked out of Antioch and they go kind of southeast to Iconium, and there they found a Jewish synagogue, and they preach inside a Jewish synagogue, and they perform some incredible miracles. But then this is what happened according to what the Bible says. There was a plot afoot among the Gentiles and Jews together with their leaders to mistreat them and stone them. But they found out about it and fled to the Lyconian cities of Lystra and Derbe and to the surrounding country where they continued to preach the good news. And so they went from Lyconium over to Lystra. The crowds of Lystra were so enthralled with the fact that Paul and Barnabas were able to heal, heal this crippled man in a miraculous way that they wanted to sacrifice animals to them and worship them as gods. But then just as quickly, citizens from Iconium and Antioch made it to Lystra, and they turned the crowds against Paul and Barnabas, and they ended up dragging Paul out of the city and stoning him so severely that they left him on the heap, as a heap on the ground, thinking that he was dead. Paul wasn't dead. He, he managed to to stand back up after his companions found him and stumble back into the city. And then the next day, the group of them went over to Derby. That is where our reading in Acts chapter 14 picks up. And with that background in mind, listen one more time to what Paul and Barnabas decide to do when they are in that town. After they had preached the gospel in that city and made many disciples, they returned to Lystra, to Iconium, and to Antioch, strengthening the disciples by encouraging them to continue in the faith and by telling them, it is necessary to go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. What did they decide to do? And they were in <clears throat> They decided to go back. They went back through those same towns 
whose inhabitants had kicked them out and hunted them down and tried to murder them. And let's not overlook the fact that they didn't have to go back that way. Look where Derby is on the map. If you go east and south to the right and down, you see the city of Tarsus. Tarsus happens to be in Paul's hometown. He knew it well. He could have come back there because if you go up and around the inlet of the Mediterranean Sea, you get to Antioch, where the missionary journey started and where it was going to end. And Paul and Barnabas could have made from Derby to Antioch in 200 miles and finished their journey, telling the church exactly what had happened, all the blessings and all the dangers that they had encountered along the way, and no one would have blamed them. Instead, they get to Derby and they turn around and they go back through those cities that had hunted them down. They go back through those same regions where the population had hated them. They go back the way they came and circle all the way back around, 800 miles back to Antioch, four times the distance that they could have traveled if they just went east from Derby. There was an easier way out. But Paul and Barnabas didn't take it. And they didn't take it for the sake of those who needed to hear the word of God. Again, 
I would have taken the easy way out, without a doubt in my mind, without ever looking back. And I know I would do that because I take the easy way out now. I take the easy way out in a time and, at, and in a place that is far removed from vigilante groups taking the law into their own hands or city officials that have the authority to do whatever they want to be. Here are a few examples of how I take the easy way out, even now. Sometimes there are people that need to hear the word of God and I have the opportunity to share it with them. But more often than not, I take the easy way out and don't say a word because I tell myself, I don't really know what to say. There are times when I have an opportunity to stand up for what I believe in. But all too often I take the easy way out because I convinced myself that now is just not the right time. There are times when I have an opportunity to introduce someone to their Savior, maybe for the very first time. Or to, or to encourage someone to see their Savior, maybe for the very first time. Or to offer someone a chance to see their Savior, maybe for the very first time. But more often than not, I take the easy way out. And I don't say a word here. Because I assume they're not going to take me up on my offer anyway. Take the easy way out. I'd rather say nothing at all than have an awkward conversation. I'd rather say nothing at all than deal with weird looks and negative comments. I'd rather say nothing at all than have to face the sting of rejection. Take the easy way out. And not just with sharing my faith or inviting someone to hear about what I believe. It's that in every aspect of my Christian life, I know what God tells me to do, but I want to take the easy way out so I don't do it. I know what God tells me to avoid, but I take the easy way out, and I do it anyway. I know exactly how God wants me to act, and exactly what kinds of things God wants me to say, and how I'm supposed to think as a Christian, but I want to take the easy way out. It's too hard. It takes too much time. It takes too much effort. I don't want to fight against my simple nature. It's much easier to give in. I take the easy way out. I'm a soft Christian. I have been hardened by persecution. I have not been toughened up by danger. I have not been solidified in my convictions, my situations that force me to stand unflinchingly on the truth. But that has made me soft. Intimidated. Complacent and sometimes unwilling to put, put in hardly any effort at all as long as I can get away with it. Maybe you would place yourself in that same category of a soft Christian, timid Christian, complacent Christian, a Christian that is sometimes unwilling to put in much effort at all as long as you can get away with it. We have a Christian cocoon. We don't have to open up unless we're around people who believe what we believe. Otherwise, we keep our faith to ourselves because that's what our culture expects. Yeah. And we try to sidestep any real conversation that's going to get deep. And we try to avoid any discussion that might reveal what we actually think. And we take the easy way out. Paul and Barnabas that day in Jersey. And they decided to turn around and go back to the cities. Would you have gone back with them? Or would you have taken the easy way out? If your conscience is feeling a little bit uneasy, if your, if your past actions and attitudes and behavior make you feel a little bit guilty as a Christian. If you've never really lived up to be the, the bold and the courageous Christian that you've always wanted to be but really haven't mustered the courage to actually do it, then it's time to go back. It's time to go back to our Savior. It's 
It's time to go back to our God that doesn't hold anything against us. It's time to go back to the one who never took the easy way out for you. Jesus did not have to come down into this sin-infested world. But he did anyway. He subjected himself to humanity. He lowered himself to our level and then lower still. Jesus did not have to put up with hostile crowds and trick questions. Jesus did not have to put up with snide remarks and murderous plots while he was on this earth, but he did anyway. He set himself up as the target of countless attacks so that he had a chance to share the word of God with as many people as possible. Jesus did not have to allow himself to be arrested under, under the cover of darkness or falsely accused by the Jewish leaders or surrounded by his enemies and spit at and blindfolded and punched in the face. But he did anyway. Jesus did not have to take the severe beatings or the brutal floggings or the awful torture brought on by a frenzied crowd and a weak little governor. But he did anyway. Jesus didn't have to bleed if he didn't want to. Jesus did not have to suffer hell's pain if he didn't want to. Jesus did not have to die if he didn't want to. Jesus didn't have to lie in a grave dead before he rose from the dead if he didn't want to. But he wanted to. He actually wanted to go through all of that. It would have been much more pleasant for Jesus if he had just forgotten about everything. It would have been easier and faster and much more enjoyable for Jesus if he had just stayed up in heaven and let this world self-destruct. But Jesus was not going to take the easy way out. He was going to take the hardest way out the most excruciating way out, the most painful way out, the most deadly way out, because that was the only way we were going to be saved. So where does that leave us? That leaves us forgiven. That leaves us completely at peace. That leaves us with a conscience that is clean and clear because we know Jesus did not take the easy way out for us. Doesn't matter who we are. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter what you've done or have not done. Doesn't matter how dirty your past has been or how dirty it's going to get. You may not be a Paul or a Barnabas that risk your life every day just to share the gospel one more time. I'm not either. But we are still children of God through faith in Jesus as our Savior. And Jesus promises all of His children that He will one day take us home. In the meantime, we are going to have some gauntlets to go through. Before we reach those glories of heaven, there will be situations you will come across in your life where you have a chance to share your faith and stand up for what you believe and maybe even invite and encourage someone to hear and see their Savior for the very first time. And it's not going to be easy. In fact, it might be the hardest thing you ever do. But isn't that what Paul and Barnabas told those congregations as they look back through it is necessary, they said. It is necessary to go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. Paul and Barnabas knew that better than almost anyone else. And you know that too. Maybe not on the same level as Paul and Barnabas did. But you know that your faith is going to be challenged. You know that your faith is going to be confronted. You know that your faith is going to be stretched in ways that are going to hurt. But do not take the easy way out. And I, and I say that to me just as much as I say that to you. Do not take the easy way out. There are far too many people that need to know the truth 
about their God. There are far too many people that need to see their sin. There are far too many people that need to hear about their Lord who did not take the easy way out for them. But He took the only way there was so that we can make it to heaven. Because He is the way and the truth and the life. He is our God, our Lord, and our Savior.